There have been a handful of players that made the jump from high school to the NBA. Many of these players most wouldn't even know or remember, as they fell victim to the pressure or simply were not ready for the league. Few make the league and even fewer go on to have successful careers. Even rarer is to reach superstar status, especially as a high school basketball player. To overcome an obstacle with such pressure takes resilience, mental toughness, and dedication. Tracy McGrady makes up a rare breed of basketball players who were destined for stardom as soon as they entered the league. Many will measure a player by championships he's won or he's a failure. We only remember the winners while eventually forgetting the losers. How can we measure the success of a player based on championships when he depends on a team to help him do so? When he, we are only in control of ourselves, it must take some luck to have the right pieces in place. This is the bio and story about the unlucky career of Tracy McGrady. Tracy McGrady was born on May 24, 1979 in Porto, Florida. Raised by his mother and grandmother, his father was not a part of his life. Already, McGrady's odds were stacked against him. The statistics are high for children without fathers. Youth are more likely to have behavioral problems, with the likelihood of growing up in poverty and ending up in prison. McGrady couldn't deny his God-given talents, excelling at basketball and baseball growing up while attending Auburndale High School. In his high school junior year, McGrady posted averages of 23 points per game, 12 rebounds, with 4 assists and 5 blocks. This would have any player in their senior year receiving recruiting letters by every college in the country. But no one had a clue who McGrady was, until he was lucky enough to be invited to the Adidas ABCD camp. A prestigious camp of the top 175 players in the country would attend and play. Tracy impressed the scouts and even himself. McGrady finally knew how well he stacked up against the best ranking number one in the nation amongst all the players. Before senior year, McGrady transferred out of Auburndale to Mount Zion Christian Academy in Durham, North Carolina. His team would rank second in the nation while putting up 27 half points a game, almost 9 rebounds, 8 assists, 3 steals and 2 blocks, while earning McDonald's All-American National Player of the Year honors. After his incredible senior year, he weighed his options. The possibility of making it to the NBA weighed heavily on his mind. He had to have a backup plan, and it was to play for University of Kentucky if he wasn't projected to go in the first 20 or so picks. McGrady was hesitant and undecided to play at the next level in the NBA. Tracy was also fearful of playing college and doing poorly in the first year, while if that was the case, he would have to stay an extra year to help drive up his player stock. T-Mac didn't want to lose this opportunity. It was an easy choice. Projected as a lottery pick and guaranteed millions on signing his first contract, McGrady entered the draft. In 1997, Tracy McGrady was drafted by the expansion team, the Toronto Raptors, with the ninth pick, signing a $4.7 million contract with the team, the max allowed at the time for a rookie. Prior to the draft, T-Mac agreed to a $12 million endorsement deal with Adidas. The six foot eight swingman dream was fulfilled. McGrady had more money than he knew what to do with. Though the overwhelming feeling of happiness didn't last very long, McGrady was about to face his toughest challenge yet. You see, basketball was easy for Tracy, always being the best wherever he played. Now he was on one of the worst teams in the league playing garbage minutes if he was lucky under coach Daryl Walker his rookie year. McGrady went on record describing his rookie year as hell, feeling lonely in Toronto, Canada, miles away from his home in another country. McGrady was at a low point in his life at 18 years old, sleeping up to 20 hours a day, clearly thinking that this isn't what he had signed up for. Though all was not lost and something happened that changed and propelled McGrady's career. He was given a chance. Late during the 1997 and 98 season, Daryl Walker resigned. The Raptors brought in Butch Carter who gave T-Mac a chance to play, to make mistakes and to develop. In 1998, the Raptors drafted McGrady's distant cousin, Vince Carter, who was an instant star in the league. He was known as a human highlight reel. The two became inseparable during the 1999 and 2000 season, McGrady's third year with the team. The Raptors were starting to make some noise, making the playoffs for the first time in franchise history. Although losing in the first round of the playoffs, this was a sign of the great things to come. They were a high-flying, exciting team to watch. Fans would be drunk off dunks for years to come if they could somehow keep their core together. The two put on an amazing dunk show at the All-Star Game weekend in the year 2000, competing against each other and putting up perfect scores. Ultimately, it was Carter who won, but the dunk competition they had, the whole world was buzzing as it resurrected the dunk comp from the stale years prior. McGrady during that season was a candidate for the 6th Man Award at only 20 years old. He was already averaging 15.4 points a game, 6.3 rebounds, 3.3 assists, 1.9 blocks, and 1 steal a game. McGrady's contract was up at the end of the 99-2000 season. His decision? 
McGrady decided to leave the Raptors, agreeing to a sign and trade with the Orlando Magic for a six year, $67.5 million contract. I believe McGrady left the Raptors as he may have felt he was unable to tap into his full potential behind Vince Carter. When McGrady signed with the Magic, another superstar had also signed. This is where the unlucky story begins for Tracy. Grant Hill, who was entering his prime, suffered an ankle injury with the Detroit Pistons before signing with the Magic. Hill had gone on record stating the Pistons medical staff misdiagnosed his injury. The injury lingered for years. The Magic thought they were getting a perfect duel with a prime Grant Hill alongside T-Mac, but it didn't happen. With Hill out, McGrady was forced to score more and take more on a leadership role. McGrady tore up the league going from 15 points to almost 27 points per game, 7.5 rebounds and 4.6 assists. Within his fourth season in the league, at 22 years old, he was already a superstar earning an all-star appearance and voted the most improved player in the league. McGrady put Orlando on his back and they made the playoffs with little to no help. Daryl Armstrong was their point guard at the time. In the first year that T-Mac made the playoffs with the Magic, they faced the second seed Ray Allen and the Milwaukee Bucks. McGrady in Game 3 of the 7 game series put up 42 points, 10 rebounds and 8 assists in a losing cause, eventually being swept in the opening round. This wouldn't be the last time we saw a performance like this from T-Mac. McGrady would win back-to-back -back scoring titles with the Magic, averaging 32 points per game in 2003 and 28 points per game in 2004. But during the 2003 and 04 season, tensions grew between McGrady and the Magic's GM at the time. Head coach Doc Rivers was also fired after a 1-10 start. Alongside, the Magic faced multiple injuries throughout the season while the Magic finished last place in the Eastern Conference. Tracy knew his time was up with the organization. He left it all on the court and that's all you can ask for from a player regardless of the turmoil in the locker room. All was not lost with McGrady and the Magic. T-Mac discovered his capabilities in the league. With the Magic he achieved 4-time NBA All-Star, 2-time NBA All-First Team, 2-time NBA All-Second Team, 2-time NBA Scoring Champion and Most Improved Player. McGrady had little to no help, losing 3 out of the 4 years he played with Orlando in the first round of the playoffs. When they signed Hill to a lucrative contract at the same time as McGrady, this held the team hostage and unable to bring in players to support the star with no room in the salary cap. T-Mac and Grant Hill played less than 50 games in 4 seasons. McGrady at this point in his career had never made it past the first round, losing 4 times. On June 29, 2004, McGrady was traded to the Houston Rockets in a 7-player deal. Rockets received Tracy McGrady, Jawan Howard, Tyrone Liu, and Reese Gaines, in which Orlando received Steve Francis, Quintino Mobley, and Calvin Cato. McGrady's response to the trade was he was happy and excited to play with Yao Ming. The team initially struggled in the first 30 games, posting a losing record in the first half of the 2004 and 05 season. But something amazing happened. McGrady had one of the most unbelievable performances of his basketball career that lasted only 35 seconds playing against the San Antonio Spurs, scoring 13 points at the end of a game for a comeback win making four three-pointers in a row, one of which was part of a four-point play and another with two seconds left on the game clock. The Rockets would bounce back and put it all together after the All-Star break, placing fifth in the Western Conference with a 51-31 record to end the season, but losing in the first round to Dirk Nowitzki and the Mavs. The following year in the 2005 and 06 season, McGrady would suffer an injury missing half the season due to back spasms. The Rockets wouldn't make the playoffs but both McGrady and Yao were putting up excellent numbers between the two of them but would miss nearly 60 games combined in a tough Western Conference. During the next two seasons, the Rockets had similar records and similar exits losing to the Utah Jazz in the opening round of the NBA playoffs. During this time, McGrady was being criticized as the player to never make it past the first round, losing seven times. But many don't realize the unlikely timing. Yao was battling injuries throughout those years also, along with McGrady dealing with nagging back injuries and now a knee injury that affected his speed and his explosiveness. During the 2007 and 08 season, the Houston Rockets went on a 22 game win streak which was the second longest win streak in NBA history. Considering the streak, they only finished 5th in the West. The first season that Yao and McGrady played together was the only season in which both players were healthy. That is one out of 6 seasons. Yao dealt with foot problems and other injuries. As soon as Yao was healthy, McGrady became injured and it never worked out. Before the 2008 and 2009 season, McGrady needed arthroscopic surgery on both his left knee and left shoulder. During that year, McGrady would sit out most of the season. His knee wasn't properly healing. His numbers dropped also to 15 points per game and 4 rebounds. Ugh, it pains me to say this, 
The Houston Rockets made the playoffs without McGrady, as he was inactive the second half of the season. They made it past the first round, being the Portland Trail Blazers in six games. In the second round, they would lose to the Lakers in a seven-game series. The Lakers won the championship that year, while the Houston Rockets were the only team that gave them any kind of trouble. McGrady's last two seasons with the Houston Rockets, he played no more than 35 games. This would be the second time he would deal with a team prone to injuries and bad timing. Tracy McGrady's final years were nothing special. During the 2009-2010 season, McGrady would be traded to the New York Knicks where he averaged 9.5 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists in 26 minutes of play. The following year, he would sign a one-year contract with the Detroit Pistons averaging 8 points per game. Then signing with the Atlanta Hawks for one year in the 2011-12 season, averaging 5.3 points per game at 34 years old. McGrady left the NBA and signed with the King Dao Double Star Eagles of the Chinese Basketball Association for one year. King Dao finished last place in the league while McGrady put up numbers comparable to his prime in the NBA, averaging 25 points per game, 7.5 rebounds, 5 assists, and 1.5 steals. He finished his basketball career after the 2012-13 season with the San Antonio Spurs. That year, McGrady finally made it past the first round with the Spurs, only to lose in the championship game against LeBron James and the Miami Heat. McGrady did not have much of a role in those playoffs, playing a total of 31 minutes. On August 26, 2013, Tracy McGrady retired from the game of basketball, leaving it all on the floor. McGrady never got a break in his unlucky career and timing was apparent. Even he has questioned recently if he should have stayed with Toronto. But would we have seen the high school draft pick transition into the superstar he was born to be if he stayed? At 21, he made a choice to leave. He was comfortable where he was and could have stayed with his cousin Vince. But we don't grow when we are comfortable. We grow as humans when we face fear and the unknown. His decision then took him on a road to a path of greatness. This was his destiny. In 2017, Tracy McGrady was inducted to the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. But wait. Oh, it pains me to say this. Tracy McGrady, if he had signed with the San Antonio Spurs in the following year, he would have won a ring. Well, 